Here we go then folks, method feeder prep. Now tomorrow I'm out on the bank with a really good friend of mine, none other than Lee Kerret. We're shooting our latest Angling Academy video and tomorrow it's all about method feeder or hybrid feeder work in the colder months. So winter method or hybrid feeder work. We're going to Boston, I'm sitting on the box, it's one of my favourite venues, it's a brilliant venue to showcase all the little tricks and tips that both me and Lee have got when it comes to catching a few extra fish at this time of year on, on a method feeder or a hybrid feeder. So, Lee Kerry, Mr. Particular, is gonna hammer me, he's gonna pull my trousers down, smack my bum, put me in the naughty corner, if I'm not fully prepared. So what I'm doing is I'm just tying up a few hook lengths ready for tomorrow, so he's got no reason to tell me off. And I thought, while I'm doing it, is I'll talk you through how I tie my method feeder hook lengths, because there's a few little things that I don't think they're commonplace in a lot of magazines or videos that you'll see elsewhere. So there's just a few little things that I think are important and might just help you catch a few extra fish. What I'll do is I'll turn the camera around, I'll put it over my shoulder, I'll try and get everything over a nice background and talk you through how I tie that little short hook length. So tomorrow I think we've got a good chance of catching a few carp, whether that's early in the session or late in the session, but even so, we need to be ready. So what I'm gonna do, you tie up my standard wafter carp, you know, mini boily hair rig. A little hook limb for your method feeder fishing, for like 90% of your method feeder fishing is what a lot of people do. So we're going to need a bayonet. That's the first thing that goes on. So we've got a little bayonet there, thread it onto the line. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie that bayonet in a loop. I'm not going to tie it on with a knot that's going to constrict it all the way down. I'm going to tie it on in a loop. And what I want, see that, see how it's sliding in a loop there? What I'm going to do is tighten that loop down so there's probably about a millimetre of movement. Let's trim it off. And what that's going to do is, it's going to help your boilie or your wafter just give it a little bit more life, just give it a bit more flexibility once it's on the bottom. Now, this isn't a new thing, loads of top anglers do this sort of thing, but it's still something that I see maybe 80, 90% of anglers missing out on. And I think they're missing out on fish by not having that movement in their bare neck. So when we put a little boilie on there, I'll show you later, there's gonna be movement in the hook bait, which I think makes the hook bait look a little bit more natural. So that's the first thing that I think is important. I'm gonna trim off maybe, of line so we've got enough pl plenty of line to work with now hook let hook hook tie so we're going to tie our hook on with a knotless knot again through the back of the hook first it's amazing how many people you know i see get that wrong as well so we're going to go through the back of the hook first i'm going to offer everything up so we've got the bayonet Hopefully it's not all fingers and thumbs, but you can see there the bayonet is just missing the bend of the hook. It actually sweeps around the bend of the hook when I move it along the back of the, the hair. Hold everything together, and then we're going to whip down. Now, a lot of people, again, really good anglers, and I'm not saying they're wrong because that's their way of doing it, and they catch loads and loads of fish. A lot of anglers would have put a little rubber on there to keep everything in line and to keep the, the bare net further down the shank of the hook. For me, it's a little bit fiddly, and because I've got little girly fingers, it means that I can whip all the way down, make it really tight, get really tight to that little knot that we created. So I've whipped all the way down the shank, back through the back of the hook, pull everything tight. You can see there, that I've negated the use of that rubber because we've gone all the way down the shank. So we've kept everything running in line. What I don't want is to see, well, what I don't like seeing, when, especially when we go out with groups and me and Leah coaching guys, is when someone puts one or two turns down the shank, it's a really weak knot, but also the hook bait can get blown above the hook. And when I want, when the hook bait goes in, I want the hook to go in the fish's mouth as well. Right, to tie a little tiny loop, 
It's how I like to do it. So I'm not really keen on fishing with really long hook lengths. I'd like to use something that's maybe two and a half, three inch long. I think when a fish comes over your method feeder, he sucks quite close to your method feeder, and I want your hook bait to be go in the fish's mouth and you to have real big problems getting rid of the hook. And I feel that with a four inch hook length, not only can your hook bait get missed sometimes because it's off the ball, it's four inches away in fact sometimes, but the fish can get rid of it a little bit easier because it doesn't feel the weight of the feeder. So I'm going to pull everything down, put a little loop of line around my finger, holding it tight on my thumb. I've got a loop tie here. One twist, it's a ridiculously strong knot this is when you tie it with a loop tie. Tie it by hand and it's rubbish. It's actually a single overhand knot, but when you tie that with a loop tie, it's ridiculously strong. And there we have, once I've trimmed that tag down, a two inch, two and a half inch. There we go, trim that down for you. So there we have a two inch, maybe two and a half inch maximum, method feeder hook length. I'll put a little wafter on for you, we've got one here. Just to show you how everything hangs in line. So folks, hope you can see that. There we go, the finished method feeder hook length. Really short, two and a half inch long maximum, near a two inch there. You can see whipped a long way down the shank. That means everything's in line. It means that when the hook bay goes in, the hook goes in as well. And the important thing, so the thing that I keep talking about, is that movement. The fact that we tied that in a loop, a bare net, it's in a loop, which means there's movement there. It can swing in that loop. It looks far more natural to a fish. And I think that definitely. Well, I know it definitely gets you more bites. So a nice little method feeder tip for you there. If you like these sort of things, if you like these sort of fishing videos, click subscribe, obviously helps me out massively. Plus, I think YouTube's gonna be our friend over the next few weeks where we're not going out obviously as much. And there'll be loads of content. I'll be putting content on the channel as much as I can, at least once a week. So until next time guys, tight lines.